Welcome back, investigators. It's time for another, you know, series in this thing we call Two Lowly Investigators. Uh, I'm Kyle. I'm Tyler. And we're going to talk about the Heart of the Elders part pack today. Um, Heart of the Elders is like uh, fourth? Yeah. Third, fourth? I think it's fourth. Yeah. I think it's fourth. Maybe it's only the third. But anyway, we're really good at this game, so just listen to us talk about these cards and our soothing Be ASMR voices. Believe us. Yeah, just believe us about pretty much everything you hear. So our, our first card is not Ornipo. It's Intrepid. Uh, Intrepid is a skill card with a brain icon. Uh, it says if this skill test is successful, add Intrepid to your play area as an asset. With the text, you get plus one book, plus one fist, and plus one foot. And then a forced, you discard it at the end of the round. So, yeah. When I first saw this card, I thought it was pretty interesting. And now he hates it. Dude. Yes. It's just, no, actually, I liked it a lot because, um, you know, uh, I thought that it's basically like a commit card that you just get for the entire round. Yeah? Yeah. Because it gives you every symbol. Well, well, it gives you the brain first. So if you fat pass that brain test, say on a treachery, yeah. right, you get plus one book, plus one fist, and plus one uh, foot the rest of the round. So, I don't know. Seems really good for anybody that can have it. Honestly, it's zero experience, so it can get thrown in any deck that can have zero experience. Uh, Sir Paladin Protector, yeah, Knight cards, Guardian Knight cards, yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I'm cool. This is a, this is a cool card. Yeah, I, I hope you see more like this. Yeah, kinda. it's it's pretty situational. I I think so. You have to like pick and choose where you use it. Like treachery, the treacheries is what I focused on like the most. Me too. And it kind of it kind of conflicts, I thought, with the all the cards that like use as your first action. So that's that's sort of what. No, I, well, it wouldn't conflict because it's a skill card. So like you could still do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure, so sure. that's what. Never mind. Yeah. So like that, it being a skill card is also really us. cool. Yeah, it's really cool because. <laughs> It, the fact that it's a skill card means you don't have to use it as an action or something like that. Yeah, which that's true. No, never yeah. mind. And I think this is a sweet card. This is probably one of yeah. my favorites in the pack. Uh, just as pure pure value, I think it's really good. Yeah. Uh, so our next card. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. You have anything? Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Uh, custom ammunition. Uh, three cost, three experience event with a fist and a foot icon. An upgrade supply, blessed item. Fast play only during your turn. Attached to firearm asset you control at your uh, to an investigator at your location, you get two ammo, and uh, it's only limit one per asset, so don't you can't you know have more than one custom ammunition. You can get plus one damage when you attack a monster with the weapon, though. So, and you mentioned something that I thought was kind of cool that I didn't notice, so I'm gonna let you say it. Yeah, I like this card a lot because um, it adds damage, but also it's uh, blessed, which means Father Mateo can have it. Yeah, he can put it in his deck, and he can be like. Omnes Deus Patris, your ammo is now damaging yeah, monsters he's more. like, have some bullets, yeah, person. Just, that's what Father Mateo does as a it's profession. Just like, he just blesses bullets. Pulls out, like, bullets out of his pockets <laughs> and, like, gives them, to, gives them to you. Exactly. But I thought that that was really cool, too. I'm digging all of the upgrade cards. I think Tyler and I both found uses for them when they're here. Like, you're using Trusted on all your Leo stuff. I was oh, using... Yeah. Uh, reliable when I was playing Zoe and putting getting reliable machetes and stuff like that is cool. I'm a fan. Oh yeah, and and the plus one damage, like it's I I love things that add damage. Yeah, they're really great. The the card I was thinking of with this was extra ammunition, and just because it adds ammo too, so it's three cost. It adds ammo. Extra ammunition is a two cost, and it uh it puts three ammo tokens. So you're getting so you get something that's. A little more expensive, and it gives you less ammo, but you get the permanent like damage effect on monsters. So, like, I guess you could play both if you really want, but I like the fact that it gives you ammo on a thing. So, you know, your forty-five automatics, or like, you know, any actually any gun, right? Like, yeah. Um, or firearm, I guess. Firearm. How do you spell firearm? Ah. <laughs> All right. What is this? I, I always forget how to use this traits. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I just want to like talk about. Oh my god, there's so many guns in this there's game. Lots of guns. You, so you have you have all the firearms that can be played off of like normal characters, like Jenny's pistols, Finn's pistols, yeah. uh, Roland's pistols. You could right? even use the uh, lightning gun. Bless some lightning. Oh man, that bless would be lightning. So cool. That'd be like a Ghostbusters thing. Yeah, you'd be truly like a Ghostbusters thing. <laughs> With that, you'd be doing three damage, and you get five fight, and you'd have five ammo on it. So 
super cool combos with this card if you yeah. have a bunch of experience. Yeah, it's it's a little expensive experience wise and with with the monies, but like yeah, you get extra ammo. That's why you don't have the the and damage the uh, the protector paladin guardian knight play it. You have somebody yeah, else play yeah. it on them. Mateo run around um, giving giving you bullets. Yeah, I think there's. I'm, I'm wondering if there's like some kind of like super support deck out there where a character just plays like all of the su cards that do things that like upgrade people's actions or do things, and it that's all they do. They don't really do anything themselves. They just like make it easier for everyone else to do stuff. Yeah, I I feel this 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 uh, set and this like whole uh, like block in general has cards. A lot of cards geared towards that. Yeah, I agree. Is what I notice. All right, our next one is Otherworldly Compass. It's a two-cost, two-experience asset with double books. The double books, it's an item and it's a relic, so I think Ursula can have it. Or there's that one, like, uh, asset that lets you, like, play relics for cheaper that she was came out when, in, like, the original expansion. But uh, we obviously remember it very well because it's played so often. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> it's an action exhaust Otherworldly Compass, and you get to investigate. And you get minus X Shroud for the investigation where X is the number of revealed locations connected to your location. So... Like the catacombs one, this could be cool in like the catacombs one in like the Carcosa campaign where you're like running oh, yeah. around the catacombs. Yeah, this one was would have been really cool in like the last one we played, which was the Boundary Beyond, because there's lots of like weird connections and stuff yeah. like that. But I I feel it's um, I sort of liked it thinking of like any campaign because I mean it gets you a minus one at least. I feel um, the the base. Like searching one is against like flashlight because I feel like yeah. it's like the standard one, mm -hmm. and um, that's a minus two. So I'm I'm thinking against that. I sort of I, I like this card because even though you get minus one, that's your standard you're gonna get. I mean this lasts forever. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, is it like it's like a penny today or ten pennies in ten days, like or something like that. <laughs> yeah, thing, yeah. Right? But I like the fact that you can <laughs> continuously use this. Like, you can only use it once around, but that's okay because guess what? It's not unique, so you can throw two of them out. Yeah. And so that's kind of cool. Um, in the terms of this other worldly compass is doing this one, this one's doing this one, and now you've done two or three actions investigating, and that's what you wanted to do. And yeah, it only costs and there's two. there's going to be, like, locations that have... There's definitely going to be locations that have more than one con connection, mm -hmm. and so... More than two, even, some a lot of times. Yeah, so I, I, I feel this is, like, a, a, a pretty good investment. Yeah, and even, I think, with Ursula, it works really well, too, because she gets the action where she can, like, move and investigate... In the same yeah. one, when she when she does that, like when she moves to a location, she can investigate yeah. it as an action or something. Yeah. And so this is nice for her because it's like it can you can like if you're doing that whole like let's reveal the whole map thing, like let's reveal everywhere so we know what's going on. This is a really good combo with that kind of play style because yeah. you're like I want everything to be revealed, and so now you're getting minus uh, minus three or four or whatever. Yeah. So I agree. I think it's kind of cool. Um, I'm interested to see if. If uh, people take their flashlights and push this in instead, if in the decks that can have it. Yeah. All right, we got a new exposed weakness. Uh, the new exposed weakness reads, uh, it's a zero cost three experience event with a book, a fist, and a question mark. That's pretty cool. Um, let me look here, actually. So that, uh, the last, the uh, old exposed weakness cost one experience and did not have a question mark. It had an extra fist. So that was, you know, a little bit of, a little more utility there. Um, it's still an insight event, and it still says fast play during any player's window, uh, fast window, or action, like immediate action window, or whatever they call that. It says choose an enemy at your uh, at your location. The test X books where X is that enemy's fight value. If you succeed, treat that enemy's fight value as if it were zero for the next attack made against it, and then you draw a card. So the upgraded version now says uh, instead of reducing its fight by one, it sets it to zero, and you get to draw a card for two more XP. Yeah. It's a pretty good upgrade, right? I think so. I mean, straight up, you're... Like, what you had mentioned uh, uh, was that you are now s able to... Almost any Seeker can now beat the monster. Can now attack this monster, right? Because yeah. there's nobody that... There's very few, I think, that have one fight. Yeah. And even if they do, they still have one fight over zero. Yeah. So it kind of puts you in a cool spot. And I was thinking of things like in combination with, like, Shotgun, like, where you could, like get some crazy tests together where you uh you because shotgun says uh you get plus one 
So it says spin an emerald of fight plus three for this attack, right? So let's say yeah. you're a normal person, like Roland or some normal yeah, normal yeah, seeker yeah. or a protector, guardian, um, and you have three. Let's say four, four fight, yeah. right? So you're at seven fight for this attack. And instead of standard damage, this attack deals one damage for each point you succeed by to a minimum of one and a maximum of five. So um, you could say you're you're already at seven, right? And if this thing's fight is zero, you're already hitting all five, depending on what you draw. Like you you had to draw higher than a minus two to not deal five damage to this thing right now. Alternatively, the other exposed weakness was minus one, so you would be at like you know one minus your total fight value on the thing. So this is in a lot of situations where you're going to want to like capitalize on damage dealing or capitalize on a really good attack a lot better than the other one, I think. Yeah. And for only two XP more. Yeah, I could see myself using four XP to switch these out if I was running Exposed Weakness 1. Yeah, because so. it, it, it gives you, as a seeker, like a attack option oh, by yeah. yourself. I mean, anytime like that, like you have Mind Over Matter, right? You have Exposed Weakness, which is good for you, and you have uh, I've Got a Plan. And yeah. those are the three kind of like seeker combat cards I always go back to. Yeah. So, I think it's cool. I'm I'm a fan of the, like, the whole set it to zero thing. Because zero, you can't go lower than zero and, and when you tie, you win. Yeah. So there's always that. <laughs> and even... <laughs> you, The only time you could actually fail is when you draw the auto fail. And, cause which everything never that, happens, ever. <laughs> Our next one is Lola Santiago. It's a three cost, three experience investigator. Again, double books. That seems to be a, a reoccurring thing because it's on two things. Because it's occurred. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. It's reoccurring. <laughs> uh, Ally Wayfarer. Um, She's a no nonsense archaeologist. Yeah. There's some pretty cool <laughs> subtitles in this one. No nonsense archaeologist. And you get plus one book and plus one foot. She's a two. She's got two health and two sanity. Um, and it says, as a fast action, you can exhaust Lola and spend X resources, then discover one clue at your location, and X is the shroud value of your location. I think I love this card because... A, because it's the card that would have made my fin deck and Carcosa work, and that's that's great, because it gives you foot and book, and that's what you want, right? Oh, yeah. But the more important fact is that once a turn, you can pay to get a clue, and it's a free action. So you could get four clues a turn. You could get a clue and do three other things in a turn, right? Like, I think, like, the whole thing, like Dynamite. Dynamite's great because you pay money and you yeah. do a bunch of damage. Yeah. You don't have to take a test or do anything <laughs> like that, right? Lola Santiago is the Dynamite of investigating. <laughs> she's, she's Dynamite. That's, that's a good description. What do you think? I'm going to, what do you think? No, that's pretty good. I think you summed it up accurately. Okay. Like yeah. her, her costing three, I don't care about because in any deck that like I think she's gonna be afforded. Allies are usually pretty expensive. Can so. you have this in Leo? Uh, no, I think she's one too expensive because I think he's okay. rogue, rogue two, rogue two. So, okay. Oh, yeah. but he could have rogue. Yeah, he can have rogues. Oh wow, cool. But I think she's a little too expensive for his Leo his Anderson. rogueness. Mister Anderson. She's a, she's a little too no nonsense for Leo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Leo wants to go on an expedition and sacrifice his allies, and she's yeah, like, I'm good, I'm going to stay home She's today. like, no. i gotta, I got to research some stuff. Yeah, you're right. So Rogue, uh, level <clears throat> 0 to 2 Rogue cards, so no yeah. no, no dice there. But that's probably okay. Um, yeah. She's cool. Only Rogue card in this pack, by the way. That's uncommon to see a single Rogue card in a pack. Oh, yeah. Uh, usually we get three. Yeah. And it's an exceptional. And it's the card that no one yeah, says we're going to be able to like, use. like, destroy Elder Gods <laughs> if you want to. Or befriend them, do whatever you want. This is a card that uh, Tyler and I giggled at because of the subtitle. Uh, but it's a two-cost Olive McBride. She is a unique... She will try anything once. <laughs> uh, but uh, she's got a brain uh, icon on her, and she's an ally witch. Witch is a cool keyword. I don't know if we have many witches. Um... But it says, reaction, when you would reveal a chaos token, exhaust all of McBride and reveal three tokens instead and choose two of those tokens to resolve and ignore the other. She's got one health and three sanity. So, I don't know. I think this card's super cool because of the things it could allow to happen, which is like, you fail a test, but you still get an Elder Sign symbol. Or maybe you get plus five on the test because you draw the right tokens or something. I mean, I like the, again, this isn't more of a card that, like, I dig it because of the chaos it induces into the game, that the game wasn't, like, the game's like, oh, yeah. you're going to draw one token and you're going to like it. And and then all of the rides like, ah, oh, no. Yeah, I, I just think this is, like, it's just a crazy card. And uh, I'm just, I'm, you I'm don't, speechless. Yeah. You don't I'm really have to love speechless. it. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just, like, 
so many crazy things could happen because like some of the the symbol the chaos tokens can just do terrible things to you and kyle's like oh that's great and i'm like well they could put doom on you it could, like <laughs> curse you to a thousand years of oblivion i so, think <laughs> because it's a mystic card i just like give up all the bad stuff that happens in the game because i'm like mystics deserve it because they're like dealing with the dark arts all the time i mean they they deserve what they get yeah. but like, uh, I think this could be really cool with Seal. I wonder if there's any, like, kind of crazy combos with Olive and Sealing Away or Probably. all of the other cards. You could just Seal Away, like, all the terrible, car like, cards and just... Yeah. Uh, Reveal, like, two of good stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, or, possible. like, with uh, Jim Culver and revealing, revealing extra tokens so you can proc more on drawing skulls and you can proc more on drawing those tokens that give you stuff in the mystic decks like whenever you draw a blank token get a resource or whenever you draw a blank token put a charge counter on a spell or something like yeah. that yeah like these give you more chances to do that because normally you have to actively be testing right this gives makes it so you get the twofer the classic twofer <laughs> all right the next card we have is an upgraded defiance um the original oh, so this defiance costs two experience the original defiance is free i believe uh it's just a skill it's got one question mark still it is a developed innate skill, and it says ignore all the other uh, ignore the effects of all skull cultist ta t tablet is that what they call yeah, it the or elder thing token symbols during this test, including their modifiers. So you you literally are saying no now, like you're you're like nope. Yeah, that's uh that's pretty good for two XP. No more double drawing tokens. No more having to put Dune that screws you over on a thing. Yeah. No more, like, having to draw a monster and fight it if you fail a test. Like... Yeah. <laughs> I underestimated Defiance before I played Forgotten Age. <laughs> yeah. No more, like, negative 3x, 3 freaking, for every, like, distance you're Ancient away location. for, like, the yeah. star stupid crap like I that. I feel like Defiance should go and, like... Even the regular one is not terrible in because you could be like, I really don't want to have to take minus ten for this test or something. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's cool, and it's a zero cost, so it can go in like a lot of. I, I'm if you watch a video from the past that says I hated Defiance or didn't like it, I'm taking it back now. I think I dig it. You you dig the level two one? I dig both of them, but the level and two one I, is <laughs> miles beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not having to pick, you know, but. We, but yeah. You could, you could use the next card on the old Defiance and just like see, yeah. So the next card is called De Premonition. Defiance combo. Yeah. Yeah. It's zero cost event. It's a, got a book and a foot icon and it's called Premonitions and has an augury subtype. And you, it's fast and you can play it during any player's uh, fast action window. And it says put Premonition into play and reveal a, a random chaos token from the bag and put it on premonitions and then as a forced action when a token would be revealed from any from the chaos bag anybody anywhere reveal uh resolve the token that is sealed here as if you just drawn it and then discard premonition so tyler thoughts uh i really like this one probably like for the opposite reason you like the witch mm. just because like it takes down the chaos yeah okay i mean because like you can draw you can like draw the negative five and be like oh I know this negative five is going to come up, so instead of like so and so fighting this stu stupid monster, I'm just going to do this crappy investigation. Oh, failed it. So. Yeah, or like, or you can prep for the test, I think, is the other thing I was seeing. It's yeah. like, you could use things like Defiance if you're like, well, that's a skull. Yeah. And then Defiance name skull. And now you just yeah. ignore all the effects and, and modifiers. Yeah. I think that. Uh, there's a little bit of my brain that is getting hurt when thinking of this card, and I can finally define why. Because it doesn't... You, you drew the token from the bag, but the token was only the token from the bag once you drew it. So no matter what, like it's like the booster pack problem I have, right? Schrodinger's token. It's Schrodinger's token or Schrodinger's booster pack, where you're like, yeah, you sealed it. Like you, The cat's dead. The booster pack had no rares in it or something. Like, But like... If you wouldn't have done that, then it could have been a different poll. It didn't. It's like it's not truly premonition, right? But like I don't. That's not bug me. I'm just like you could premonition it, and then you use it, and then you seal it. Yeah. Oh, right? uh, yeah, that could work. And then you get the real token. It's worth. Yeah. <laughs> but I just like I think that's what was getting me earlier. Was like it's not like premonition because like 
yeah, what if you, it was a different token if you wouldn't have used premonition like i don't know it's just, it's like it's like when you watch doctor who and you try to figure out how time travel works and you're like you made a terrible mistake you should not have thought about it all right, our first uh, survivor card is called Tr Live and Learn. I keep wanting to say try and try again every time. Uh, zero cost event with a single, that's a single question mark. It's a spirit, so I think that means that, uh, like, Calvin can already have it, but spirit cards m can matter. And it's fast, and it says, a play after a, t a, test, a skill test you failed ends. And then there in parentheses, there's a reminder text that says, after resolving all effects from the failed test. So, you know, if you did have to fight a monster and have it do things, or if you had to, like, you know, take a doom or take a horror or doom, after all yeah. that crap happens, you can attempt the test again and you get plus two skill value for the test. So, yeah, it's interesting. Because it's kind of like a weird half version of Double or Nothing that doesn't really, like, do what Double or Nothing does, but it's like... Because you, yeah. you failed. So in, in the terms of survivor talk, like, you could get things when you fail, right? Like, you could grab its foot, or you can, like, get stuff back when you fail. Yeah. So, like, failing can be cool. Yeah, failing can be good. But, but then you get terrible. to do the test again at yeah. plus two. So you could, like, manifest a situation where you fail, get a bunch of crap, and then you do it again, and, and then you really succeed yeah. at it. So, so And it's it's free. So, yeah, it's... Uh, do you want to talk about your issue with this card? It's not. It's not too bad. I don't remember what it was. It was I think it was, it that was something with the art. Why is there blood on the book? Well, yeah. Why is there blood on the book if you get to live and learn? Because <laughs> it looks like you're dead. Because <laughs> it looks like no one really it's lived. <laughs> so nobody is like no one, alive in this situation. No one's situation. living or, a... or learning from this. Okay. At least they're not bullet casings. They look like actual bullets. So it means they're not just like leftover shots that that guy just got shot. I mean, questionable questionable all right our next card is called take heart this card is a really cool like mechanically i think um because it doesn't it's it's, it's a skill card that doesn't have any skill icons which is like what, what are you doing you guys misprinted this card what's going on yeah but that, it's an innate when i saw it and it's a you can only commit one per skill test and you can only commit it to, and you can commit it to any type of test though which is very i think we talked about this on a previous uh episode but like, we were using Min Typhon's ability wrong because we were committing cards to tests as if they had question marks instead of giving them extra question marks after they've committed. Mm. Because you can't commit a test skill to a test unless it has an icon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't but this card heard. breaks that rule. Okay. And it says, if this test fails, performing investigator draws two cards and gains two resources. Okay, yes. So if you were trying to fail, like, you know, if you had take heart and you wanted to use live and learn right after it. Yeah. You could set up a situation where you like make sure you fail. Yeah. Like maybe it's a premonitions and it's a terrible thing, right? Yes. So you someone's premonitions and you're like, I want to fail. You're like take heart, draw two cards, get two resources, and then you get to play live and learn for free and redo the test at it with a new token at plus two skill. Yeah. We've lived the dream. We've manifested <laughs> the situation. We've made all these cards. Great. But yeah, take heart seems cool if it's in a deck that can do it. Like because otherwise it's like. Of coin flip or something like that. I mean, it's not literally coin flip because that's not how probability works. But you commit it, and you're like, maybe it'll fail. I don't yeah. know. And uh, it's basically like uh, we were talking about this earlier. It's like replacing one action for four. Basically, like making your d draw two, two reason, take two resources, draw two cards, actions. So. But it's a gamble because you might yeah. not actually do it. So you, I said because you might succeed at something. Yeah. <laughs> Which is unlikely in this game, but yeah. I said I thought so. This is a, I thought this was a good card for Silas, who's not an investigator that's anywhere yet. He's only in the books. You can only get a promo version of him with the alternate like weakness and thing. But he can once per round, after drawing a token, pull a skill card back to his hand. So you could like commit take heart, and it's like oh sh I'm gonna win, pull it back, and then be able to use it again next round or something, right? Yeah. So very build the roundy, I think. Could be cool. That's a lot of things you get for failing. Like, a lot. It is, yeah. And I've been using the, the, the skull. Oh, the, yeah, the decorated yeah, skull. Yeah, and uh, I like the get a resource on a card. Because uh, it's basically... Text, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's really good. Because it's just... It basically replaces, like, the action. It makes the get, like... It makes the get resource or get card action, like, worthless. Because yeah. you can just, like, use the like text on the card instead of that those actions so i really like like 
cards that do that now. And I, I used to be really worried about drawing mm -hmm. weaknesses, but they're just part of the game. Like, you at least you got a resource, right? Like, yeah. So you're going to have to deal with weaknesses no matter what, because you're going to draw at the end of every turn. So, I mean, you can choose n not to draw most of the time in terms of, like, card effects. So, like, like in terms of card effects that you control. Like, you can be like, well, I don't want to draw right now. Like, I'm not going to do that thing that lets me do it. So, uh, the next card we have is called Against All Odds. It's a spirit card again. It's two cost and two experience, and it's got a brain, a fist, and a foot. And it says fast. Play when you're performing a skill test with a difficulty higher than your base value. So it just reads fast. Put it, put this in Calvin's deck. And then reveal X additional chaos tokens for this skill test. Choose one and resolve it uh, and ignore the rest. And X is the difference between the test difficulty and your base skill value. So an example, right? Last time we were playing the Boundary Beyond, I drew a treachery card that wanted me to test four brains. I had four damage on Calvin, so I could have tested it equal. I'm testing an equal skill, right? Yeah. But Calvin's base values, I think. Let me check. I can check on this because we have the power of the internet. I I believe he gets pluses and yeah, so he gets plus stuff for horror and damage on him. It doesn't say your base value is changed it's to this becomes, for each horror. Okay. So it's like, it's not X's, it's zeros, right? Yeah. So against all odds, um, what's the other one? Uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I The one that's like, talking about, you get so. uh, you get plus like three if your base value is something or whatever. But uh, this one is, so you get to, I get a revolve, I get to pick four tokens and I get to pick one. Like, that was cool. I picked an elder sign and I like healed something and like I won the test and it was crazy. Like drawing four tokens. Oh yeah. Like and I can imagine that being way crazier too because if you needed to do like a combat and it was like six or something yeah. for some reason like against those crazy vengeance stuff, you could draw six and like auto, like almost auto succeed, right? So. So a must for any survivor. -er. No, I think it's great for Calvin. I think you'd have to. You only so any survivor with like a low stat, like a, yeah. a Wendy. Actually, any any person who has like a stat, like a stat of one, like Finn has a brain of one. So if Finn could use this card. Like I would say, when he needs it, it's great, because you can basically like guarantee something good is happening. I think it's really cool the way they designed that, and it's a really powerful card. And it's got the art from Eldritch Horror on it. Go back. That's the box art from Eldritch Horror. So if you like that game, you also like this card. <laughs> Which I do, and I do. Uh, the next card we got is called Trench Coat. Trench Coat is a three cost asset for, with one foot icon on it. It's an item in its clothing. It's not a leather jacket. It's not. It's definitely not. It's not a leather coat, Tyler. Oh, sorry, not uh, a leather coat. It's you get plus one foot during an evasion attempt, and you have two uh, extra health that you get. It's a good filler card. <laughs> I was comparing this again in my head to. Uh, like Elder Sign and like Bulletproof Vest. That's not how you spell bullet. That's not how you spell bullet either. <laughs> how does it we'll, we'll, we'll get there. How does the internet work? Because <laughs> uh, like Bulletproof Vest costs two, it costs three experience, uh, it does some you, stuff and gives you four health. Four like, health. I thought it was three. It kind of like oh, moves okay. around that kind of realm of. It's a little expensive because there's cards that do similar things, but if you want the extra foot during invasion, like. It's a must have, I guess, because it's a body thing and not a lot of items cover your body like that. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I'd rather just take like an ally or something else for three. Yeah, I think it gives people a building point. So, like, people who do need health, they can throw this in if they can't have a leather coat and they get an extra two health and they can run away better. Like, and it's not meant for everybody again, it's meant for low, it's like filler low level cards, low health mans. Yeah, true. Because they can't, they can't. That's true. Want to release another core set yet? I hope, and like so, they don't want to change that. Then we get to the possibly the coolest card in the pack. The coolest. Okay, he's he's decided it's the coolest. It's a four cost, three experience <laughs> asset. Oh god, I'm just so I want to use this card. This bow is it's better than a gun. Yeah, because it's ornate. It's it's very fancy and got like intricate inlays and stuff. It's got a fist and a, and a foot icon on it. It's an item relic weapon and it's ranged. So this is this works with marksmanship because marksmanship is ranged stuff, right? Oh, yeah. I think. 
Um, it's weapon, so you can pull it out with, like, you know, prepare for the worst. You can bandolier it, blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's a relic, so you can pay it for cheaper if you have that lady or you have relic <laughs> stuff. And it's an item, so you can put it in a backpack. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, it's just got a bunch of good keywords on it or traits on it. It says use one Emma, limit one Emma on Ornate Bow. So you can't, you know, extra ammunition it or whatever. Nah. As an action, you can spend an ammo to fight, and this fight uses feet instead of uh, fists because it's a bow. It's not a gun, whatever. I mean, I don't know, guns yeah, use feet, but yeah. uh, you get plus two feet, and you deal plus two damage for this attack. That's, that's three damage. That's a ton of damage. Yeah, like, that'll kill most things outright. Like, that's the dream. Uh, and you get plus two feet. And then, as an action, I love it when they put, like, action stuff there. Like, when they do the retreat text, and it's like, let's get out of here. Like, you <laughs> knock another arrow, and you place one ammo on ornate bow. So, so like... Infinite phew, ammo for this bow. Phew, yep. So, the four costs... Oh, my God, it costs four. Whatever. You can play... You've got ammo on it forever. And if you have this in the deck with, like, Leo DeLuca, you get the extra fourth action every turn. Guess what your fourth action is every turn? Yeah. You can do this twice in a turn. And it's, it's four... Which is which isn't bad. I mean, the forty fives cost four. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they cost four. I still have the firearms up from earlier. Uh, so I mean, it's... yeah, your forty five automatics cost four. Chicago typewriters five. Lightning guns six. Your shotguns five. Springfield's four. So it's up there with in cost with some of the higher ones. But, but it does like equal or more damage than some of them. And it uses feet, which is a very very yeah. important part because yeah. There's some investigators that have good feet but don't have good fight. And this exactly. allows them something that they can use, right? Yeah. And it's 3 XP, which is, like, cheaper than, uh, like, some of the higher damage weapons. Like, it's yeah, cheaper, than, four, cheaper than the spring four. force field. Yeah, lightning guns, five Chicago typewriters, four. And yeah. it's neutral. Like, yeah. neutral. And it's neutral. The thing I really think is cool um, is that it gives you two feet when you're using your feet. So... Uh, I like any card that gives me two fists when I'm fighting, and they're very, very few and far between. Even shriveling, like, it takes you how much experience on shriveling to get plus two brain when you use it, like four or five? Uh, yeah. And so, I don't know. This is, is so cool. And the theme comes through. Yeah. You can only have one at bow notch. You're not Hawkeye. You can't, like, <laughs> that's what they need to come out. The ha <laughs> like, like, archer, right? Like, yeah. Or come out with, like, titles. That would be cool, too, right? Like, uh, yeah, anyway. Ornate Bow is really cool. Yeah, it's the, yeah. the only issue with it is, like, it's really slow. It, like, takes an action. Like, but, I mean, rogues can, like, sort of overcome that. And even if you only shoot it once in a turn, you're most, like, it's like an aim mechanic in an RPG, right? You're aiming, right? You're doing a thing before you attack to make that attack better. I'll pay that extra action yeah. to kill something outright. Yeah, like, as, as Leo, I've, like, found myself having extra actions because, like, I've killed stuff really fast. Or you have, because you're using the survival knife, and you're like, I don't want to kill, I, it's easier to kill something on the reaction of the survival knife, right? Like, yeah. I, with, the, with this bow, I could, I could probably, like, I would be killing things in one turn with this bow. Yeah, the only problem is, is that, but he has no, you could, because if you had a bandolier, you could have the bow yeah. and the, oh, Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, the combos. Oh, they're going through my head. The combos. <laughs> the ornate bow is really cool. It's, uh, I think it's probably the best card in the pack. Overall, this pack was pretty it's crazy. Pretty yeah. Like, I think there's a lot of cool stuff in this pack. It's a good pack. It's, 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 good, pa it's, it's, good, it's good pick. It's good. It's uh, good. Lola came out finally. We have Olive. We have Premonitions, which is janky. We have cool cards like Take Heart. Uh, Intrepid, like a committed skill. A committed, a committed skill card for the rest. Good, good neutral adds, right? Yeah. Man, good pack overall. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I like it. I like it uh, a lot. So I do want to talk about one more thing. I think oh, we're at thirty-three minutes. We'll talk about it for maybe a minute or two. Uh, Tyler was asking about the survival knife in terms of, um, like dealing damage versus assigning damage. So what we settled on after looking at rule stuff is that you can use the survival knife. Um, after you're dealt damage, right? Because dealing damage is an act that happens. It's the whole total thing. It's dealing, it's assigning, and then it's placing, right? You're dealt damage, you assign the damage, and then it gets placed on cards. After that whole thing happens, regardless if the damage actually got placed on you or not, survival knife reaction ability goes off. So you could damage your thing and then come in and shank somebody, right? Uh, that's what we landed on. If you, We wanted to hear what you thought maybe in the comments, like what you guys think about the survival knife and reactions and how to like the window works. Um, also, 
interestingly enough, we found out that the survival knife can attack things you're not engaged with if they were to deal damage to you. So we were learning about the Etzel archers or whatever. Oh, yeah, the them Etzel being archers. aloof. There's some really cool, confusing interactions there. So feel free to comment about what you think those are and what you like. And see you next time. See you next time, investigators. Chimp investigators. <laughs> <laughs>